Welcome back everyone to some more World of Tanks. In this replay, we have General Pippo in one of uh, the tier 8 German Tech 3 heavies. There's just so many tier 8 heavies inside the game. Um, it is the Tiger 2. Gonna go with uh, a Bond uh, a turbocharger with a gun rammer and with a survival improvement suite, which will, you know, increase so many things about the vehicle. Those experimental equipment pieces are absolutely lovely. So, a very nice loadout for the Tiger 2 with, uh, yes, a very generous amount of gold rounds. So the regular rounds are not bad. 225mm of penetration is not bad at your rate. Um, but when you switch to the gold, 285 is just so, so much better. Also, larger consumables and a premium consumable, obviously, on their Tiger 2. I guess they're trying to go for the third mark. My goodness, avoid the Besante over there. I'm trying to go through the top of the Besante's vehicle. Unfortunately, it does not go through over here. Um, so Tiger 2, right, it actually has one of the worst um, win rates out of any tier rate heavy inside the game. Also, win rate differential is one of the worst as well. Unfortunately, missing that VK. Urgh, trying to hit that Capola of uh, the other, that other, like the one of the other, right? <laughs> German tier rate heavies. Um, so why is the Tiger 2's win rate so low? It's not because the vehicle is bad. I mean, it has very decent DPM. It has... 8 degrees of gun depression, which is nice. It has that 360 alpha damage on the gun. Like I said earlier, the penetration is not bad. Uh, the hull, the hull is very weak though. It will get penned by most vehicles. Like 220, 230 millimeters of effective armor on the upper plate. The lower plate is way worse than that. So 220, 230 is kind of like, you know, getting penned areas by regular tier 8 vehicle rounds. Um, also the turret. The turret is okay, but, you know, 250-ish on the flat area on the turret, as you can see over here. This entire flat area is around 250-260 mm of effective armor. So if you do get hit with gold, as you can see, a lot of people will be firing only gold these days to be able to penetrate more easily. And yeah, it kind of makes the Tiger 2's armor unusable, I guess. I guess, unless they try to shoot your side, which, you know, when angled is very strong indeed, it will bounce everything if you're able to, to side scrape out. If they try to shoot you in the hull, they will not be able to penetrate. You need to actually kind of a little over angle um, and not show the front. And that is the perfect way to angle the Tiger 2. But that's the Bissonti once again trying to be cheeky, trying to be sneaky over here. Okay, so if the Tiger 2 has okay armor, if it has an okay gun, right? Okay, mobility, 38 uh, kilometers an hour top speed is definitely not the worst. 390 meters view range, right? You can also spot for yourself what is the Bissonti doing. I don't even know. I don't even know. But if the Tiger 2 is so, like, you know, decent, I guess, all round, why is it not having high win rate? Why is it struggling so much, right? Well, this is only the upgraded Tiger 2. That is the problem. Right, with those tech tree tier 8 vehicles, because there's so many, there's like such a huge variety of tier 8 premium tanks that are just better than fully upgraded regular tier 8 heavies, then those regular tier 8 heavies, unless they're actually fully upgraded, they won't even be able to compete. Like when they're stock, there's just no chance. A stock Tiger 2 against, let's say, a 7032, it has no chance. It will struggle to go through the 7032, and it will get penned most of the time, unless it's kind of like a weird bounce um, in the turret as well, which is very weak when it is still stock. So that is, in my opinion, the problem at tier rate. It's not the fact that the tier rate vehicles are overpowered, right? I mean, it is. It is a bit of that, obviously, when you have those disgusting vehicles like the BZ-176. But the problem is they're more powerful than fully upgraded tech tree tanks. So, if they were just better than stock vehicles, I think it would have been, would have been a bit more balanced if like a fully upgraded tech tree vehicle would have been pretty much at the same type of, uh, you know, damage per minute, armor, all of those things as a premium vehicle, which gets it without having to grind. I think it would have been a lot better. You would have seen a lot uh, closer 
numbers in terms of win rate between premium and standard vehicles. But the problem is the premium vehicles are just so much better than upgraded vehicles, right? And that is just, you know, how will those regular vehicles compete with better than fully upgraded ones when they're stock? It, it's just, it doesn't make any sense, right? So if you fight a Tiger 2 that is stock with a fully upgraded Tiger 2, who is going to win? The fully upgraded Tiger 2, right? But once you upgrade the Tiger 2 and you fight against the BZ-176, who is going to win? Most likely the BZ-176, right? So how is the stock Tiger 2 able to do something against the BZ-176? That is the question over here. Um, and I think that is where Wargaming made a huge mistake. I believe that making premium tanks like a lot better than upgraded tier rate regular tanks, that is where they went wrong. At first, like the vehicles were just kind of similar to the upgraded vehicles, maybe even a bit weaker than those vehicles. Like you have the FCM 50T, which is pretty weak. I mean, it is trash these days, right, compared to some of the other premiums. Uh, you have the Lerva, you have those uh, T-34, right? Those are kind of like, they are good, they are decent, they can be used in specific areas, but they're not overpowered. So if a Tiger 2 fights a Lerva, it's pretty balanced, right? It can go either way. The Lerva doesn't have the DPM, but has more armor. Uh, the Tiger 2 has the DPM, has less armor. They can fight each other on pretty much level terms but the problem is they added kind of broken vehicles BZ-176s and the likes which just they're, they're just like a tier above they're a tier above an upgraded tier rate and I think that is pretty much what ruins the tier rate matchmaking and that is exactly why most tech tree vehicles most tier rate tech tree vehicles are just going to be so much worse in terms of win rate than premium vehicles. I actually took a look earlier today to see tier rate heavies, to see their win rate. And it took like, it was, I don't know, 20 maybe of premium vehicles before I saw the first tech tree vehicle. And then there was more premiums. There were more premiums before we saw another tech tree vehicle. But if you go from lowest win rate, it's just a bunch of tech tree vehicles, obviously, because they will have their stock versions and they will have their upgraded versions and that means that they will be weaker overall against those premium vehicles. So in my opinion how how do you fix that right? You, you, yes you heard me complain quite a bit going on a rant over here for though it's supposed to be the amazing game by General Pippo over here that was supposed to be showcased went on a rant about how uh, tier rate matchmaking is kind of ruined these days because of premiums. But yeah, how do you balance this out, right? That is probably what everyone is asking. Well, you just need to make the premium heavies as good as upgraded tech tree heavies. You don't want them to be better than upgraded tech tree heavies because then they're broken, right? Because then they'll just defeat every single vehicle they encounter except another premium. And that means that people who are using tech tree vehicles will just be like, okay, I have no chance, right? They're just better. They're better than me when I'm fully upgraded. So when I'm stock, like, what am I supposed to do? Can you switch? There we go. Lovely intuition switch. Wait, she's trying to finish off the GW Tiger P with a one shot. Love those intuition switches. Intuition is one of the best skills in the game. Um, but yeah, to balance that, you kind of need to make premium vehicles as strong as upgraded tech tree vehicles. They should not be better and by quite a bit, right? Some of them are better by quite a bit than their tech tree counterparts. Sure, it will sell more, I guess, because it's kind of like getting the the upgraded tech tree version immediately, and then some, right? Because it's better than that tech tree vehicle. But overall, in terms of longev longevity for the game, I think that's how you say it. My goodness, English has left the chat today. <laughs> uh, that is not going to work. Like, tier rate is just spammed with premiums. If you just take a look at the lineups over here, let's see how many premiums we have. I didn't even check, okay? So we have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, and we have uh, five, six, seven, and eight. 
So half of the allies are premium vehicles. And that is pretty low. Like when I check on stream, I have 10, 12 even um, premium vehicles at tier 8. On the enemy team, it's probably pretty much uh, very similar. You have 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, let's see, let's see. 5, 6, 7. Seems like 7. Maybe I missed someone over there. Maybe I missed someone. I do not know. But it's basically half of the tier 8 matchmaking is just premium vehicles. And when you have half of the matchmaking premium vehicles, they will have the higher win rates. Right? They're just better than their counterparts. Projected 46, if you look at the remaining vehicles on the enemy team, it's just a Pantera with a built in gun rammer. So it just has better rate of fire, and everything else is, you know, kind of similar, I guess. But it just it's just better because it has way better rate of fire. And that is my problem with premiums at tier rate. It's just, instead of making it a premium vehicle that is like the upgraded version of the tech tree vehicle, they made it a premium vehicle that is like the upgraded version of the tech tree vehicle, and then some. And then gave it another boost, another slight upgrade, to be able to sell it. And that is how you just ruin an entire tier. That is why tier rate matchmaking is probably uh, the worst inside the game at the moment. But yeah, let's not take away from General Pippo's game over here. 6,000 damage in the Tiger 2 and 8 kills so far. Unfortunately, left against two very healthy tier rate mediums. Drop at 1 feud is 45. This is, this is not looking good. The Prochetto is very healthy as well. And 5 kills already. There we go. Put one another one into the Udas. And there's the Prochetto. 46 on 600 HP, actually. They're both two shots. What is General Pippo going to do over here? Who can focus first? The Prochetto 46. One into the Prochetto 46. Okay, the Udas 45 bounces. Prochetto pushes forwards, bounces. The second one, my goodness. Can it block? No, the Prochetto actually pins that third shell. Need to avoid the Prochetto. Okay, finishing off the Prochetto. Now the Udas is... Oh my goodness, down to a one shot. The Udas is still a two shot over here. Trying to put another one into the Udas. Turn around. Uh, to, to shoot, there we go, and give a ram, <laughs> my goodness, I actually did get the ram and the high roll, which is absolutely insane, my goodness, Wargaming, that was nice of you, giving General Pippo a roll of 424, that is a huge high roll, and then, you know, just the, the little nudge at the end, the little her gave him the 10th kill of this battle, almost 8,000 damage, 7,950 damage in this battle, 356 spotting, 2,790 damage blocked, which is rather surprising, but I mean, is it really? Considering that General Pippo was angling exactly like you should with the Tiger 2. Um, it's just absolutely amazing stuff with uh, what is probably one of the, the worst tier rate vehicles, like if you look at win rate, but it's not really. It's not really. Like I said, the tech tree vehicles are not bad. If you look at them, they're not bad at all. You know, the Carnarvon, the Tiger 2, those are very decent vehicles. You have way more of those. But because they need to compete against overpowered or sometimes even broken vehicles, like, like I said multiple times, the BZ-176, for example, then they, they just can't compete. Even though they're decent, they're not overpowered. So they will just struggle. They will have less win rate because they will be matched up against those overpowered premiums. They will have worse win rate differential, they have worse results, and yeah. It's just kind of like a lost tier. That's basically it. Tier rate is already kind of lost uh, to the premiums in World of Tanks, which are now trying to actually try and push some more premiums at tier 9. Hopefully, hopefully it will never reach the tier rate situation where most vehicles are premium vehicles and they're just way better than the tech tree vehicles but it does seem to be the case with seeing more and more tier 9 vehicles so far they've not been broken so far they've been uh, very balanced at tier 9 so i really hope they'll continue in this way if they do intend to bring more tier 9 premiums and just not make the bz mistake once again do not do that and please Please just nerf those vehicles. If they're too good, you can just nerf them. I mean, you can give a refund or something. Give the the amount it's worth in gold or whatever. Or maybe even give the players who have the vehicle the nerfed version and give them a gold compensation type of thing for nerfing the vehicle. Right? So if they nerf the BZ, they'll be like, 
okay, we apologize, you bought the vehicle, you can either get a full refund, like get the, uh, the price of the BZ in gold, or maybe you can get like a, a thousand gold and the nerfed version of the BZ. So those are two options, there's just so many options to do something about the very unbalanced tier, which is tier 8 at the moment, so yeah. Tiger 2, it's an okay vehicle, it's not bad, it's not bad at all, but when you compare it to broken stuff, to overpowered stuff, it will just suffer, it will look awful, when in reality it isn't. So yeah, General Pippo, amazing game, thank you for showing that tank tree vehicles are still viable, they're still relevant inside the game, albeit with a very nice amount of gold rounds and very, very nice equipment. Uh, but yeah, how lovely was this battle? And did General Pippo actually get to the third mark? As you can see, it's two marks over here so far. Uh, yeah, let's go and check out the post game stats real quick. There we go, General Pippo did get to the third mark. Congratulations on getting the third mark on the Tiger 2, an ace tank, obviously for 2,184 base experience earned over here. A bunch of lovely ribbons, a pulse medal for 10 kills, steel wall for blocking 2,790 damage over here. Like I said, the Tiger 2 doesn't have the best of armor, but if you angle correctly, it can bounce quite a few shells, unless, unless they fire gold right into the cheeks and stuff of the Tiger 2, which is, it's not the worst, but you know, it's kind of like 240, 250 millimeters of uh, effective armor in the flat areas. A high caliber, obviously for 7,915 damage, which is insane for like a tier 10 vehicle, let alone a tier rate. A top gun for at least six skills, in this case it was 10. Um, 2,184 XP, like we said, 10 kills, 7,000 damage, just first by quite a bit in all aspects over here. 30 shots fired, 25 hit, 24 of those penetrated. So this, this is actually, very nice, a very nice ratio of hits to penetrations. Um, but I mean, when you fight gold, when you fight gold, you kind of expect this to happen, but still, it is amazing marksmanship by uh, General Pippo over here 7,950 damage, 764 of a distance of more than 300 meters, so not shooting at long range most of the time. 15 hits received and only 5 penetrated, so this is really surprising. Um, if the enemy team likes it, fights gold into the upper plate, into the cheeks of the vehicle, they will be, they'll just penetrate easily. So luckily none of that happened, and General Pippo was able to block 2,790 damage. Uh, two vehicles spotted, most likely the VK and Bisonte. Um, if I'm not mistaken, yes, indeed, uh, 10 vehicles damaged and all were destroyed. All were destroyed by General Pippo eventually. 356 damage caused to the, due to the player's assistance and traveling three kilometers in this battle. Uh, but yeah, for firing only gold, General Pippo is going to lose 38,000 credits over here, but I mean, that is a trade that is worth it, 38,000 credits for this lovely battle with three marks, 100% worth it. 2,184 XP, 3,276 in total, 164 free XP, lovely, lovely stuff. And uh, yeah, I was actually just, trying to show that a tech tree vehicle can still have good results, but it kind of became <laughs> a, a rant video about how broken tier rate matchmaking is at the moment. So yeah, General Pippo, amazing game. Congratulations on getting the third mark. Amazing stuff. Just absolutely lovely game. And once again, thank you for uploading this replay, showing that even tech tree vehicles can still be dominant in the battlefield. Um, but yeah, this is this is it for this video. So thank you so much everyone for watching. You're awesome. Stay awesome. And yeah, let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of the Tiger 2? And what do you think of tier rate matchmaking, right? Do you agree with my points earlier? Do you actually think that maybe I'm wrong over here? And uh, premium vehicles are not as bad as I make them out to be? Let me know your thoughts, your opinions. Always happy to have a conversation about, you know, pretty much anything. So. Thank you so much everyone for watching, you're awesome, stay awesome, stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Tata's people, have a good one!